Hey guys! So I guess it's my turn to read y'all a story. I picked three of them that I used to read all the time when my kids were little. Um, first is cook a doodle doo. We're gonna be making strawberry shortcake. The other one is a bad case of stripes. And let's go home, little bear. So let's get started. I think we'll do little bear first. Okay. Once there were two bears, big bear and little bear. Big bear is the big bear and little bear is the little bear. They went for a walk in the woods. They walked and they walked and they walked until big bear said, let's go home little bear. So they started back home on the path through the woods. Plod, 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 went Big Bear, plodding along. Little Bear ran on in front, jumping and sliding and having great fun. And then Little Bear stopped and he listened and he turned around and he looked. Come on, Little Bear, said Big Bear. But Little Bear didn't stir. I thought I heard something, said Little Bear. What did you hear, said Big Bear. Plod, 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 said Little Bear. I think it's a plodder. Big Bear turned around and he listened and he looked. No plodder was there. Let's go home, Little Bear, said Big Bear. The plod was my feet in the snow. They set off again on the path through the woods. Plod, 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 went Big Bear with Little Bear walking beside him, just glancing a bit now and then. But then Little Bear stopped and he listened. He turned around and he looked. Come on, Little Bear, said Big Bear. But Little Bear didn't stir. I thought I heard something, said Little Bear. What did you hear, said Big Bear. Drip, 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 said Little Bear. I think it's a dripper. Big Bear turned around. He listened and he looked. No dripper was there. Let's go home, Little Bear. That was the ice as it dripped in the stream. They set off again on the path through the woods. Plod, 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 went Big Bear with Little Bear closer behind him. And then Little Bear stopped, he listened, then he turned around and he looked. Come on, Little Bear, said Big Bear. But Little Bear didn't stir. I know I heard something this time, Little Bear said. What did you hear, said Big Bear. Plop, 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 said Little Bear. I think it's a plopper. Big Bear turned around. He listened and he looked. No plopper was there. Let's go home, Little Bear, said Big Bear. That was the snow plopping down from a branch. Plod, plod, plod went Big Bear through the path through the woods. But Little Bear walked slower and slower, and at last he sat down in the snow. Come on, Little Bear, said Big Bear. It's time we were both back home. But Little Bear sat and said nothing. Come on and be carried, said Big Bear. Big Bear put Little Bear high up on his back and then set off down the path through the woods. Ooh, ooh, ooh. it's only the wind, Little Bear, said Big Bear, and he walked on down the path. Creak, creak, creak. It's 
Only the trees, little bear. Big Bear and Little Bear walked on down the path. Plod, plod, plod. It's only the sound of my feet again, said Big Bear. And he plodded on and on and on until they came back home to their cave. Big Bear and Little Bear went down into the dark, the dark of their own bear cave. Just stay there, Little Bear, said Big Bear, putting Little Bear in the bear chair with a blanket to keep him warm. Big Bear stirred up the fire from the embers and lighted the lamps and made the bear cave all cozy again. Now tell me a story, said Little Bear. And Big Bear sat down in the bear chair with Little Bear curled up on his lap. And he told a story of plotters and drippers and ploppers and the sounds of the snow in the woods. And this little bear and this big bear plodding all the way home. Next up, let's do Cook-a-Doodle-Doo. -doo. This one was given to me by my oldest friend in the world. Um, I was friends with her since kindergarten, and this was the first book she gave me when I got pregnant with my first son. Okay. Peck, peck, peck. Always chicken feed. Day after day, year after year, I'm sick of it. Squawked big brown rooster. Can we get something new to eat around here, please? Nobody's listening. What's a hungry rooster to do? There's no hope. Wait a minute. Rooster remembered a story his mama used to tell, a story handed down from chicken to chicken, the story of his famous great-grandmother, the little red hen. Rooster rushed into the chicken coop. It has to be here, he said. He looked high and low, and there it was at last, hidden under her nest, her cookbook. The Joy of Cooking Alone by L.R. Hen. Rooster carefully turned the pages, so many recipes, and I thought she just baked bread. Look at the strawberry shortcake. That's it. I'll make the most wonderful, magnificent strawberry shortcake in the whole wide world. No more chicken feed for me. Yes, sirree, just like great granny, I'll be a cook, cook a doodle doo, crowed Rooster as he pranced toward the big farmhouse. Cook-a-doodle-doo, said Dog. Have you lost your marbles, Rooster? Asked Cat. You never cooked anything before, said Goose. That doesn't matter, cried Rooster. Cooking is in my blood. It's a family tradition. Now who will help me? Not I, said the Dog. Not I, said the Cat. Not I, said the Goose. And away they went. Rooster pushed open the kitchen door it looks like I'm on my own, just like great granny. He sighed and put on his apron. We'll help you. Rooster turned and there stood turtle, iguana, and pot pig. Do you three know anything about cooking? Said Rooster. I can read recipes, said turtle. I can get stuff, said iguana. I can taste, said pig. I'm an expert at tasting. Then we're a team, declared Rooster. Let's get ready and start cooking. Turtle read the cookbook. Heat the oven to 450 degrees. I could do that, said Iguana. Look, I'll turn the knob. 150, 250, 350, 450. Hey, cooking is easy. Rooster put a big bowl on the table. What is our first ingredient, he asked. The recipe says we need flour, said Turtle. I can do that, said Iguana. He dashed outside and picked a petunia. How's this flour? No, 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 said Rooster. Not that kind of flour. We need flour for cooking. You know, the fluffy white stuff that's made from wheat. Can I taste the flour, asked Pig. Not yet, pig. 
said Turtle. The recipe says to sift it first. What does sift mean? asked Iguana. Hmm, said Turtle. I think sift means to search through. You mean like when I sift through the garbage looking for lunch? asked Pig. I can do that, said Iguana, and he dived into the flour, throwing it everywhere. Can you see that? No, 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 said Rooster. Don't sift the flour like that. Put it through the vent sifter. Rooster turned the crank and sifted the flour into a big pile. Can I taste the pile? asked Pig. Not yet, Pig, said Turtle. Now we measure the flour. I can do that, said Iguana. He grabbed a ruler. The flour is four inches tall. No, 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 said Rooster. We don't want to know how tall it is. We want to know how much there is. We measure the flour with this metal measuring cup. We need two cups, added Turtle, so fill it twice. Rooster dumped the two cups of flour into the bowl. Can I taste it now, asked Pig. Not yet, Pig, said Turtle. Next, we add two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one half teaspoon of salt. No, 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 said Booster. Don't look in the teapot or under the table. Those spoons are for measuring. Each holds a certain amount. Rooster measured the sugar, baking powder, and salt, poured them into the big bowl, and then sifted all the dry ingredients together. It looks awfully white in there, said Pig. I better taste it. Not yet, Pig, said Turtle. Now we add butter. We need one stick. I can do that, cried Iguana. He raced outside and broke off a branch. How's this stick? No, 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 said Rooster, not that kind of stick. A stick of butter. Rooster unwrapped the butter and dropped it into the bowl. That butter is just sitting there like a log, said Pig. Maybe I need to taste it. Not yet, Pig, said Turtle. Next, we cut in the butter. I can do that, said Iguana. Uh oh, scissors don't cut butter very well. No, lost the book. No, 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 said Rooster. Don't cut the butter with scissors. Use these two table knives like this. And he cut in the butter. He cut the butter until the mixture was crumbly. It looks mighty dry in there, said Pig. Perhaps I should taste it. Not yet, pig, said Turtle. Now the recipe says to beat one egg. Oh, I can do that, said Iguana. No, 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 said Rooster. Don't beat an egg with a baseball bat. We use an egg beater. Rooster carefully broke the egg into a dish, beat it with the egg beater and poured it into the big bowl. That looks tasty, said pig. Please let me taste it. Not yet, pig, said Turtle. Now add milk. We need two thirds of a cup. I can do that, said Iguana. Here, hold that glass measuring cup and I'll saw off a third. We'll use the other two thirds to measure the milk. Wait, said pig. Why don't we fill the measuring cup to the top and I'll drink down a third. No, 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 said Rooster. The cup has marks on it. One third, two thirds, one cup. We'll fill it to the two thirds mark. Rooster poured the milk into the bowl. It surely needs tasting now, said Pig. Not yet, Pig, said Turtle. Now we mix the dough and we put it into a greased baking pan. Rooster stirred and spread as Turtle read. Bake in the oven for 15 to 18 minutes. Iguana shoved the pan into the oven. Let's see. 15 minutes equals 900 seconds. I'll count them. One, two, three, four. No, 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 said Rooster. And he set the timer so Iguana would stop counting the seconds. Pig burned his tongue on the oven door trying to taste the shortcake. Turtle studied the cookbook to see what to do next. Let's cut up the strawberries and whip the cream, said Turtle. And they cut and cut and cut and whipped and whipped and whipped until ding. 
Brewster grabbed the oven mitt off Iguana's head and took the shortcake carefully out of the oven. Oh, it's beautiful and it smells so good, said Pig. I know I have to taste it now. Not yet, said Turtle. We need to let it cool. Soon the shortcake was ready to cut. Rooster sliced it in half. They stacked one layer of cake, one layer of whipped cream, one layer of strawberries. Then again, cake, cream, berries. It looked just like the picture of the strawberry shortcake in the cookbook. This is the most wonderful, magnificent strawberry shortcake in the whole wide world, said Rooster. If great granny could see me now. Let's take it to the table. I can do that, said Iguana. He yanked at the plate. The shortcake tilted and slid splat right on the floor. Pig was ready. Now it's my turn to taste it. In a split second, the strawberry shortcake was gone. Every last crumb had disappeared into the pot belly of the pig. Our shortcake, cried Iguana, you ate it. I thought it was my turn, replied Pig. I'm the taster, remember, and it tasted great. But it was our masterpiece, moaned Turtle. And a tasty one too, said Pig. Now we can make something else. Yeah, Iguana glared. How about a plump, juicy roast pig? Pig gasped. Roast pig? How, how about Iguana pot pie or, or turtle soup? No, 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 cried Rooster. Listen to me. We made the shortcake as a team, and teams worked together. But pig ate it, whined Turtle. Iguana dropped it pouted pig. Turtle should have caught it, grumbled Iguana. It doesn't matter, said Rooster. The first shortcake was just for practice. It won't be as hard to make the second time. Well, added Turtle, we don't have to worry about messing up the kitchen. It's already a mess. So who will help me make again, said, asked Rooster. Pig, Turtle, and Iguana looked at each other. I will, said Pig. I will, said Turtle. I will, said Iguana. Cook-a-doodle-doo, crowed Rooster. Let's get cooking again. Together, they made the second most wonderful, magnificent strawberry shortcake in the whole wide world. And it was a lot easier than the first time. Okay, here is the recipe. And it's showing up backwards. I don't know if you can see it or not. So maybe if you want to come back and reread this later, you can do that. Just watch it in the mirror. You get the whole thing the right way. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't know if I am past time or not, but let me do another one. And if you have to go, you have to go. This is a bad case of stripes. Okay. Camilla cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans, but she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered in stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Her rainbows are kind of pretty. Miss Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered. But just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say. And she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, 
hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching. No, Camilla told him, I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Knight of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything were normal. But when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her, striped turned, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard, and a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster than you could change channels on a TV. That night, Mrs. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from the school. She's just too much of a distraction, and I've been getting calls from other parents. They're afraid those stripes may be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart, he asked. No, thank you, cried, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm, well, yes, I see. Miss Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. After, about an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the Creams. This is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialist went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed and tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Grop. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not the chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or a sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grop. Then they filed out the front door, followed by Dr. Grumble. That night, that night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up in the next morning, she did feel different, but when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit quite right. She looked in the mirror and there staring back at her was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called, but this time, instead of the specialist, he brought the experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out popped little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The experts looked at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again back at the lab, Dr. Gord explained. We'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge cow crowd was camped out on the front lawn. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance. 
until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. Can you see Camilla sitting in that chair? One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth. Her nose was a dresser and two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do? cried Mrs. Crane. It just keeps getting worse and worse, she began to sob. At that moment, Mr. Crane heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it, and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans? asked Mrs. Cream. Oh my no, replied the kind woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said, no one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and started toward the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good. And being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she'd been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Suddenly the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere, she patted Camilla on the head. And she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care one bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never had even a touch of stripes again. Now I know I'm done with my time, so I'm gonna let y'all go. But thank you for listening. Uh, if you didn't catch it this time, hopefully you'll swing back by and pick it up later.